Hola amigos, ¿cómo están? Estamos aquí en una nueva sección de Fan Deportivo. Estoy muy emocionado que estamos con tres grandes jugadores de Ángeles de la Ciudad de México y pues se el tiempo para platicarnos un poquito de sus vidas y cómo ha sido su camino hasta llegar a lo que hoy son como profesionales y grandes atletas. Guys, thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you for having us. Thank you for having us, for sure. So if you want to introduce yourself so people start knowing you. My name is Nala Poku. I'm from Northern Virginia. I'm a forward for the Angelus. Why, why you say this so cool, bro? I'm Nana Poco Poco. I didn't know he was a four. I didn't even know that, but okay. Center, but okay. Touch the center. Hey, you know. We say him get in front of the camera, say anything. I must be a point guard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Mark Vidal from Lake Charles, Louisiana, and I'm the point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center for the Angeles. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jacoby Boykins. Uh, I'm from St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, I played two and a three, shooting guard and small forward for uh, Angels. You're, you're not a forward. <laughs> Can he do it over? Do it uh, over. This is yours only. I say you're a center. <laughs> Cause we taking this disrespect. <laughs> say it one more time, bro. And say center. Go. Center. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Nile Poku. I'm from Northern Virginia, and I'm a center for the Angelus. There we go. They so. They say so. <laughs> Well, guys, I want to know, like, how, how this journey starts? When did you realize you want to become a professional athlete? Uh, for me, I know uh, growing up, a lot of my family were athletes. And so I always remember an athletic family. Um, I really didn't have no dreams to really just take it this far. I wanted to really be a cook, um, be a little <laughs> chef, because my mom used to always be a cook. But, um... I just became an athlete because of my, my brothers and sisters. I got five and five, so I'm the baby. So all of them was athletes, and for me, uh, I was just an all-around player. And so it just happened, honestly. Which was the first sport you started, like, trying? The first sport I tried? Man, y'all gonna laugh at me, bro. So <laughs> the first sport I tried was trying to play tennis. Oh. I tried to play tennis. Oh, chill out, bro. Don't do it, bro. Tennis? <laughs> Tennis? Oh yeah, is that everything funny, huh? I'm just asking. Oh okay. Just... Yeah, I was trying to be I try to play tennis. You trying to be Serena or the boys? Anyway, I started off trying to play tennis and uh you know what I'm saying after that it just started working out. I started doing basketball, football and just playing every sport, you know, even golf and uh I suck at golf but I can hit I can hit the ball though. So yeah. my, my question is, uh, what age did you start playing tennis? Like what, what age did you start? And when did you stop? I really started like around like seven, and I ended at seven because I was trash. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I won't go after that, but nah, really? nah, they really put a tennis racket in my hand like at seven because my sister actually played tennis. Oh. And she was in Texas and she played tennis and uh, tennis and volleyball at that time. But uh, for me, yeah, it started when I was seven and it ended when I was seven. I was trash. <laughs> <laughs> trash. <laughs> so, Nana. Uh, how I started playing basketball was I just it just came to me because uh, when I was younger I started playing soccer at first because my dad is from Ghana and like people from our country and known for playing soccer yeah. and my uncle was like a professional back in Ghana oh. so for me when I came into <clears throat> basketball it was just more so like something I just wanted to do for fun and then as I got older I started to like love it more because it started to become like something that I actually had a passion for you know as opposed to my father wanted to play soccer But I actually started out playing football at first. And then once I got to like around high school, I decided that I was gonna make basketball my main focus. And I didn't really think I didn't really think that far ahead to like, you know, being a pro and all that because I didn't really know how far I could go because because I was a late bloomer, so like I wasn't like the highly ranked dude, I wasn't like the five star. I was like under the radar, hidden gem type of guy. And it just kind of made me work harder to like get to where I am now. Hmm. What position did your people play? Yeah, I was going to ask that yeah, too. My uncle was a forward. Well, he's a forward like you? Forward in soccer. Oh, in soccer? Yeah, yes. soccer, yeah. <laughs> well, I just wanted to make sure. I need to make his position wrong, you know? Nah. You know, so I'm just making <laughs> how long, sure. How long you play professional, y'all? <clears throat> This will be my second year. That's my year, y'all. Probably be around five, six years because the injuries, ah, yeah. injuries riddled with him. You so. ain't play soccer like that? I tried it, but I just really didn't like it. So I kind of trash. Played for a team. <laughs> Played for a team or not? Nah, just came with my dad. Just playing around for fun. Too. Yeah. Trash. 
It's most mostly American football. Bro. No, 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 no. It's trash. <laughs> You're trash like me in tennis. Just say that. Fair. Trash. Okay. I want to see you. I, I want to see a picture of you in your tennis. I, I'm just waiting for you to say which which is the sport you try first. Yeah. Because, I'll, yeah, I'll, because I'll, they already said like tennis, soccer. I, I'm uh, just wondering which what what yours. I play hockey. Yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> nah, my, my first sport, my, my first love was baseball. Oh. I started like very young. I played t-ball, so that's when it first starts. Yeah. Uh, my first love was baseball. Um, I played up until I was like seven. So I started at uh, I think four, five, I played like two years. Yeah. I was very nice. Um, but then after a while, basketball just came into the picture. I played baseball, basketball, and football. It was my three sports. Like, like I said, I didn't play baseball for that long, only for two years, and I was very young. But uh, football came into the picture. I was and no football. Basketball was just something I just did just because I was I was I was good at it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It was just like a hobby basically. There was nothing I took uh, serious until I got to the seventh grade. Until I met my high school coach. Uh, he, he used to coach an AU team called the Corsair Cavaliers. And um, I used to play like rec basketball, like for the rec centers and stuff when I was young. But like I said, I didn't take it serious. I was just playing just because I wanted to play it. And one day, uh, they was doing like a little draft or whatever. And I remember every time I used to play the rec center, I used to play against one of my friends. His name was Red. And my team, his team, used to always go to the championship game, but we would always lose to his team because they was always like better stacked. They was like uh, had more talent than us. So when my high school coach came into the picture. I was hiding behind somebody because I didn't want to get picked by his team. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to get picked by my homie's red team so I can finally win a championship. Yeah. So my high school coach was like, yeah, we want the skinny dude right here. So then, like I said, I played rec center with them and then I got moved up to AAU when I got, when I got to seventh grade. <clears throat> and then there he was like, no, you can make some money playing this game at, when I was in seventh grade. So I was like, shit, I'll take it more seriously. That's when I started working out every day and it was making it a priority in seventh grade. And here now to this day, so. Yeah, Vander has like a similar story like you, like when they start, obviously some somebody comes to you and says, yeah. hey, yeah. you can make some money. Yeah, exactly. yeah. That's there's, there's the money, yeah, you can sure. start doing something. What was your record? Uh, Y'all kept losing to him? No, no. So when I was on, when I played for my high school coach, when I, we was little, we went undefeated. And Over. We whooped they, whooped the team. <laughs> they whooped my homie's team behind. Like, it okay. wasn't even close. Yeah. Because uh, he had, so my high school coach, he got a son, and then the other assistant, he has a son too. Ah. So I didn't even know them dudes was on the team. Yeah. So I'm just thinking it was just me and the guys he picked up. So I didn't know we had, like, extra talent coming to the team too. So Tough. when they got the team, I'm like, oh, we nice for real. So <laughs> I was losing before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trash. Before. I wasn't, they wasn't in the league though, mm -hmm. it was just like trash. Another different league, so. so we all started off trash. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> so that's how I came about. I was a baseball player at first. So. And well, as you keep growing, uh, as you keep the, like okay. just moving on your stories and your life, uh, some of the of the stories here in Mexico is like trying to get a scholarship, not get paid, because here in Mexico for Mexicans is it's not very really hard yeah. to get to the pro level mm -hmm. and get paid. Yeah. So scholarship is like yeah. your main goal. Sure. Mm -hmm. Just have a scholarship, make your degree, and yeah. just get a that's professional how, life. That's how that's how it was too growing up. Today, like yeah. you know, it's, it was to make a scholarship, but yeah. also like to stick with it to, so you can be a pro and get paid for yeah. what you like doing. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Yeah. Some my guys parents. just do it for the scholarship. Some guys do it because they want they want to be their job. You know. So, yeah, my yeah. parents are more big on the degree for me. Yeah, same, so same. like for me, uh, they didn't want to pay for school because we didn't really have that much money to pay for school. So my parents is like, man, you can play all these sports and they can get you into college. And you can get a degree and you can start a new life. He wasn't even thinking about being a pro until I got to like high school and stuff like that. But other than that, it was just for me to get my degree and go to some big school. You know and do whatever so so you said like none of you want to be a pro when you were so li so, no. so so little i'm not gonna i was because i remember uh i was in the first grade i wrote a i wrote a letter and i wrote a letter i wanted to be a professional baseball player <laughs> on the letter that was my that was yeah. my what i wrote a letter i was like, i want to be a professional baseball player hey. just a different sport you're grade, doing I right that. now i, yeah. I wrote i want to be a professional baseball player. that's <laughs> I what i be, said bro i want to be the president i, I swear a I judge 
Oh, you don't want to be judged? judged. Well, I want to see the judge name. Hmm. Court is session. Judge, now there's one of He's breaking his arm. He's so tall. Bro. I used to watch like Judge Judy and like all the stuff. <laughs> Judge Judy. That's, that's crazy. That's why it looked fun. I was like, hey, that could be fun. Okay. But you're a funny bro. That's funny. That judge is crazy. I never But know. then uh, you start you start growing and you start just seeing that you can make money, you yeah. can get a scholarship. Uh, in, in what part of the process you think that you just said this is this is the way I want to make it? Did, did somebody tell you like as you said like hey there's there's some money yeah. you maybe shouldn't go to to get a scholarship you just stick to this this part of the yeah. process? Oh, uh, I mean for me, I realized this when I was like in middle school when I started getting recruited and I started seeing the growth spurt and everything. So I was ducking like when I was in sixth grade. And so after that, I started getting a lot of feedback saying, man, you might can do something, bro. Like, you can be good. I started getting older and older to like seventh, eighth grade. And that's when I first got my first scholarship, like eighth grade. And then um, I committed my eighth grade summer to, to Baylor, of course. But then from there, it's like, dang, I could do something special. And then that's when they had like the ballers' lives and all that stuff. And I was like, all over that and then people in my ear telling me that I can be a pro even in my own eyes then I was just like I just want to go to college and like my mom said I want to get a degree that's really was it like I wouldn't even think about pros I'm telling you until I really got to high school and college I wasn't really thinking too much about it until I got to Baylor really about that time hey more like taking advantage of the opportunity yeah that more of an opportunity taking yeah. more of that just you know, cause I'm the first in my uh, family to graduate college. And so for me, I was just like, I just want to do that. And then, shit, after that, um, all the rest of the stuff started happening. <laughs> what made you want to go to Baylor? Uh, it was close to home, and it was a Christian school. My mom's Christian. Um, and very religious. And like I said, they came and got me when I was young. Like, they came and got me eighth grade summer. Then they take me on campus, man. They point that golden 1.35. Million dollars for that. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> I'm like, that's how much it costs? I'm thinking stuff like that. It wasn't even too much basketball. And then a lot of the athletes, they recruit are from Louisiana. Yeah. You know, from Ricardo Gatters and all those other guys. But uh, it's a Christian school close to home. Mom and dad can drive, all that stuff. So yeah. that's why I really wanted to go. I didn't know it was going to turn into a powerhouse. Now, at that time, it was just Baylor. Yeah. At that time. That was like a football school, bro. It was a football school, RG3, yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. So. That was, I don't know. <laughs> what was your favorite moment from being at Baylor? My favorite moment at Baylor? That wasn't basketball related. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say, that's that tough. Was, that wasn't basketball. That's no. tough. <laughs> graduating. When I graduated and I got my degree, I cried because I was the first. So sure. I ain't gonna lie to the same. You felt like you felt like you broke a generational curse, right? For sure. So when I got my For degree, sure. I was more happy about that than anything. Sure. Like that's to me, that was bigger than winning a the championship there. And it's just like, damn, like. Yeah. I would never thought. No what cap. did your parents say when you got that degree? Cried. They cried. They cried. They was really happy for me. Because they was like, you know, my dad dropped out in high school. My mom went to college, but she had to drop out because she started having um, kids and stuff. And so for us, it was just like, you know, it was a big thing. You know, I was more than an athlete at that time. Like, that's why I felt like I accomplished something. Like, because a lot of people think that athletes are just so dumb. Yeah. They think the athletes can't really Ooh, do certain you, stuff. You just got the point because yeah. I was talking a few days ago with uh, Andreas and Otto, right. and these Mexican guys that just came like a couple of years, like you out of, of university, and they were like so, so mad yeah. because they were like, every single guy we see at tech or at other universities here in Mexico, they say we're dumb. Yeah. That the teachers just say, like, hey, you, you got a good degree just because you're uh, an athlete yeah. and it's like we busted our asses every single time seriously, because seriously. they can stay home and they can do their homework to study but right. we're in a bus going to a game and back five hours away and then we got to, exactly you know, man it's hard so much sacrifice you have to do as a, as a college athlete is crazy yeah. it's mind blowing especially the regular students not, not to put anything against them but they don't even know the half of what uh -oh. an athlete goes through yeah. Like yeah. from practice to study hard to 
weights to eat and all that. Like, it's, it's back so to much class. we got to sacrifice that. <laughs> Getting up early in the morning, so much we got to sacrifice and to stay on top of our grades, too, to be eligible to play. It's, it's just, like, then you're so trying much. to have a life outside of basketball yeah, exactly. and school. So it's like so much. People see you different when you get yeah. to that point. Yeah. Once you get to college, everyone looks at you different. Like, you like this big time something. Uh-huh. Or something. It's like, so outside looking in, they look like. Like, you know, we don't do anything We just Yeah, yeah. But, You're not a real person to them Yeah so once I got the degree I really weighed that mug in the air And I was really <laughs> the middle finger To everybody who thought I couldn't do it So You know what I'm saying I even had My first year That's how I knew it was real Cause in My first year I had gone on academic probation At one point yeah. Cause I wasn't taking it so serious And then they told me like Hey When you're on academic probation Man you can really get Sit out Like you gotta sit out games I'm like what <laughs> so this I'm happened? Like, yeah, I'm I, like, I, I have my sophomore year. Yeah, yeah. you gotta uh, take it serious. My coach uh, had left schools, so I didn't know if I was gonna transfer or not. So yeah. I wasn't going to class, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what happened to me. Yeah, yeah. 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 academic probation ain't no joke. <laughs> you gotta write that, you gotta write that <laughs> essay, six Fancy pages, class. extra class, you gotta say why you should, you should stay in campus and stuff. I'm like, I don't wanna do that. Yeah. Man, yeah, boys. They made me take night class. No, nah, six pages. And then they gave me night class. You write to the dean, you write to the prison, and everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the part of the story that people don't know. Yeah, that's your own. And they usually they don't care. They yeah, just see you right. playing and they say like, "How? Oh, he's the player." Exactly. Yeah, but I, I got a degree. Yeah. I got a, a process behind me yeah. that it's not just the regular effort to get to yeah. an office and just make that. Yeah. A lot of athletes don't graduate though. A lot yeah. Of yeah. Get a yeah. Yeah. A lot yeah. Of don't. Especially if you're a lottery pick. If you're in a lottery pick, for me. I knew going into college, I was like, that's going to take me probably two, three years if I wanted to go pro. Yeah. And I was like, I might as well get my degree while I'm here. They got some guys who are lottery picks who really don't have to sacrifice and really do it. You know what I mean? But yeah. for me, it was more so like, I got to get my degree. My mom told me I got to leave with a degree before I do anything. So. Getting two of them, <laughs> two of them, two degrees, two of them, bro. That's big. That's big. Yeah, it's what we were saying. Like sometimes the the system makes you break and it takes you out of the of the equation. Yeah. But when you take the the chances and the opportunities they present you, it's like, man, I got the chance. I got the skills. Yeah. I'm just gonna use it in my favor. It's not just like just letting them use me. Yeah. Yeah. More than athlete. That's that's why I think LeBron and them was really trying to tell guys to like, you gotta be more than an athlete. You gotta show that you got different. Um, stand, yeah, like different. You got different everything. You can do a little bit of everything. Like for me, like I like to cook. I like to do a lot of different things. Some people wouldn't even think I can cook. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I'm just saying you gotta have a little more flavor to yourself than just athletes. So some guys get caught up on just being a basketball player. Then when it's over with. They ain't really got too much. That's over. Yeah, yeah. it's over yeah. with. It's over with. So, yeah, getting that degree showed me I can do more than just play a basketball. The ball gonna go flat one day. <laughs> <laughs> and when you think about this process, it's it, it just came to my my mind. Like, what would you say when you retired will be your your perfect spot, your perfect uh, scenario of your life. Right, right. Well, you're too young to start just looking yeah. on that, but yeah. I, I know that there has been like something. Yeah. It was it was like that for me. Um, graduated. And, and high, no, in high school. Yeah. Like retirement, like what you said, because yeah. I didn't think I was uh, play basketball again because my uh, my junior year in high school I got to a car accident and I oh. broke my C1 and C2 on my neck. Yeah. So. Uh, at the time, I didn't think I was gonna play basketball again because you know, I thought I was gonna be paralyzed or you know yeah. dead because I, I broke I broke my neck. So, Damn. but when the doctor told me that you know I was I had recovery 100 percent so I could go back to playing basketball again, so I was just like so grateful to hear that. Like I, I remember dropping to my knees and praying and thanking God like He gave me an opportunity to like you know do what I love to do. And A really big do second it. chance. Because yeah. this happened in high school, my my junior year. That's like one of the most important years if you're a basketball player. That's what one of the most important years to have. That's like recruiting wise and all that so it was just it was very tough on me and, and my family at the time too so it was it was very it was very crazy just when you said retirement so I was just thinking about I could have been stopped playing basketball a long time ago you know what I'm saying yeah. I could have not been here in front of you in front of you guys I could have been still in Florida or somewhere else doing something different you know so I definitely after that day I, t- I took life way more serious because just from that instant I could I could not been here you know what I'm saying so I get that 
just, just what you say in the retirement thing, that's what made yeah. me think of that. It was just like, I could have yeah. been stopped playing basketball. This could have been my life yeah, if exactly. he just stopped there. Yeah. C1 and C2. I want to see two on my neck, bro. God damn. I was a neck brace for three months. I, I got this like a... Are you moving like this? At the news, they, it's all on <laughs> yeah. YouTube and everything. I, 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 like he this. said. Nah, for sure. God yeah. damn. So three months, bro, neck brace. Three months. I'm thinking... A shower neck not, brace and a... Not walking brace. again, oh, like... Oh, yeah. Three months, bro. Oh, I got this on. I was going to ask you something else. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I had a girl. Yes. Ah, leave oh, me alone. Still on it. No okay. <laughs> Still on it. Okay. <laughs> she can say that. That's crazy. <laughs> you out of pocket, bro. bro. Crazy. Next question. Next question. Next, next question. question. <laughs> and you oh. guys, what do you think? Like, <laughs> my bad. I got. Don't it. worry. Don't worry. My bad. <laughs> like, okay. I, I just, you, you, you came already from two professional sports. Yeah. Yeah. Some people don't make even the first one, <laughs> and you really make two of them uh, at some of the top levels. Yeah, um, it's so <laughs> that story is crazy because the last time I played football was like eighth grade. Yeah, and so um, like I tell people, man, I live a life like Forrest Gump. I just be doing different stuff. <laughs> um, but I'm just blessed, honestly. I'm just an athlete at the end of the day. But the way that came about was really, my mind was set up on the NBA. But before then, we had the Marsh Madness run. We won the championship. But we played a team, Wisconsin. Um, Russell Wilson went to Wisconsin. Yeah. And so he watched that game, man. Like, I think I had like a crazy dunk towards the end, like the last two minutes. I don't know if you guys want to show that clip or not. But uh, I remember getting a text and DM from Russell Wilson saying I should play football. And the only reason I checked my phone for that was because my other teammates was getting like Damian Lillard, um, Steph Curry, Draymond, and all them people was reaching out. I'm like, I'm the one who reached out to me. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I go to my DM and I check, and it's uh, Russell Wilson. I'm like, what the hell Russell Wilson doing in my DM? Yeah. And so me and him started talking. It was like, good game, whatever. I think you should play football too. You know, just give football an option. You big enough, you like you got the hands, you're fast, whatever. I'm not really paying it on mine. Uh, I'm texting back and forth with him. He's like, what you running the 40? I told him a 4 2. <laughs> I told him a 4 2. He was like, how fast? He said, like, you're really? Crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's real fast. And I'm not even that, nowhere near that. It's like a receiver. Tyreek Hill. Back. I would, yeah. I would tell you. Tell me run a 4 2. I would tell you this. Like a 5 2. Yeah, when I, when I meet him, he uh, Bobby told him, like, hey, you think this guy can, can jump on a run? I was like, yeah, he doesn't look like a basketball player. He looks yeah. like an athlete. Uh, athlete yeah. and, it's, yeah. and it's just a different thing. Like, here yeah. in Mexico, we just said that. Like, in the States, we see that, that they make you. As you said, like, you will play different sports. Yeah. Yeah. You become an athlete. Yeah, that's you it. You got different options. Here in Mexico, we sometimes it's like, hey, you're going to be a soccer player. Yeah. And that's your way. Be a soccer player. And yeah. and that's always in your mind. Just try to make to yeah. the soccer level. Yeah. And that's all. I was just all around. My dad was a dual sport athlete. He played everything. Mom played everything. So for me, um, I think I had no choice but to just be an athlete. Yeah. But like I said, man, when I got to training and stuff for football, I actually went to his house first. Um, it's over with now. I can tell the story because at that time I couldn't tell it <laughs> because he's was you know yeah. you couldn't say it at that time. But um, I actually went to his house and was working out for the first time. I put on cleats in years. Uh, I'm catching the ball from Russell Wilson, and I'm surprising myself like I'm really good at this and this and that. But I was so focused on the NBA at that time that I left his house without the answer of saying yes. I went back and started training for the NBA draft. But then what's so crazy, it got leaked out that I had worked out with Russell. So next thing you know, the Cowboys reached out to me. Then another team reached out to me. So imagine this, I'm working out for the Dallas Mavericks. And after I leave that workout, I'm going straight to the Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm getting on another flight. I'm going to Miami, uh, work out with the Heat. The next thing you know, the Dolphins. And I'm going to work out with the Dolphins. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? So I was doing... I had a busy summer, bro. I was doing both. Like, yeah. some days I go basketball training. Some days I'm learning how to get a three-point stance with football. Some days I'm going to basketball. Next thing you know, I'm learning how to run a curl route or something, you know. So, um, it was crazy. And what made me make my decision was, um, after the summer league with the Trailblazers, I had a decision to make if I wanted to go ahead and go to the G League 
and try to earn the two-way, which some of them teams offered. But that time, it wasn't guaranteed 500 k yeah. um, It's like 40000 I think, something crazy like that. Uh, or go to the NFL, where I can be a 6'4", 6'5", beast, you know, because them guys are not that tall or that big. So, uh, pause. Um, but for me, I just, I'm going to go to football, make the money, yeah. see what I can do. And um, I lasted two years. I got a Super Bowl over there. So I got a championship and a Super Bowl. I mean, that's two lives that you can't really get back. So yeah. how, how was that conversation with your, your agent to make that decision? Like, was he like, on your side and be like, bro, he, you think we should take this football instead of this basketball? Like, my, was he like that or? No, my agent was so goddamn confused. <laughs> My agent was like, you want to what? I'm like, I don't know. I want to go play football. He said, so you he, didn't even know. Now, he knew. He was setting up everything. But yeah. the thing was, he never had an athlete that can do both. Yeah, that can do both. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's rare. Like, I think they said, like, I was uh, 40-some years. It was the last time somebody ever yeah, tried to. Graham did that for, like, Miami. He played basketball. Yeah, he played yeah, basketball. He to, to yeah, yeah. So, something yeah. crazy like that. Then they said from the NBA to the NFL, whatever. But, uh, no, my agent actually was confused, bro. He was like. You want to what? I said, I want to play football. He said, football? He said, but, okay, we do this. We got to stick with it. Yeah, so. You know, we can't go back to basketball. And then I told my parents, they was like, what? Yeah. You play basketball your whole life. Like, why are you trying to go play football? I was like, man, I don't know how to explain it. I'm, I'm you there. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. You there, gotta tell you. And so everybody was just so confused when I made a decision. I got hate for it, though. I got a lot of hate to going, going to football because they want me to stay in basketball. But... Um, I'm back now, so I'm just happy to be back, honestly. But I live two lives in my own, you know, I went. A lot of athletes wish they could do that. Yeah. No, wish one can say that they got a Super Bowl. Yeah. 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 I got got a lot of hate from a lot of NFL guys, too, though, because it's like you got to think about it. These guys do the same thing we do in basketball. And here I am just coming and walking there and say, hey, I want to play football. They're like, ah, come on, come sign the contract. And so for me, it was was pretty cool, though. But then at the same time, it's kind of hard. Guys are trying to make it hard for me until I got to the Chiefs. And it was it was fun. That's that's a lot to take in. That's yeah, that's, <laughs> that's something like yeah, it's it, a lot to take we in. hear that and it's like uh, oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's different. It's yeah. different. I'm surprised. The next question was how's Pat Mahomes? That's why, I, that's why I get that all the time, bro. I get it all the time. But like all the guys there was cool. Like Pat, it's a big kid. Like they whole locker room is childish. When I say childish, it's childish. <laughs> Like pranking, uh, basketball, just childish. So I'm glad it's what made the great teams, though. Like, yeah, we yeah. childish. Around, yeah. Everything in too serious. Yeah, we childish. You know I'm I'm glad that's what makes it more fun. We're and, childish. Bobby's childish. Nancy's childish. Everybody else want to be together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's not like oh I want to hang with him. No, everybody's fun. So you yeah, know what I'm saying? everybody it's just, just trying to get around. Yeah. You know yeah. It's like I'm, I'm always the life of the party though. So they're not that fun unless I'm there. You know. So uh, <laughs> I'm the fun, I'm fun one. They they miss that part. Okay. <laughs> I'm fun guy. <laughs> and you how how was coming like from from Ghana like? Uh, it was it was an adjustment because like I was like the first generation to be born in the states. Damn. Yeah. Oh. Like <laughs> my father and my mother were both born in Ghana and my and my older sister. First generation. So I was the first crazy. one to be born in America and I was the first one to like do everything that's like been unheard of because from my hometown. I'm one of three people that's made it this far in their career, like professional. Yeah, that's good. So, and, 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 and ironically enough, we all went to the same high school. <laughs> oh, oh, y'all went to the same high school? That's crazy. That's, yeah, they were, they were, my first senior, generation. I was a freshman and they were seniors. Dang, that's good to be a first generation. Do you know if they still play to this day or? No, they still do. They still do. I still, I'm still in close contact with them. That's good. And it was like, it was weird because like, bro, I'm a kid. From an African household, yeah. I'm in a new. I'm in a new. I'm basically I'm in a new country by myself, trying to figure everything out, trying to figure out what's going to be the thing that separates me from everyone else. Because mm -hmm. I had cousins, mm -hmm. I had like aunties, uncles. They were like lawyers, IT, like doing stuff. I was like, like doing sports. Or, like me being the guy I was, being a basketball player. Everyone was like, you a basketball player. Like, I had doubts like coming from my own family because they didn't think I would be able to get to where I was getting to. Yeah. And even from my hometown, people didn't think I was going to be that the person I am now because like you never they ain't never seen it before. Like they never seen somebody get so close. And the last person I even got close to the NBA was Kendall Marshall, who played for UNC. Yep. 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 
So then when it came when I came along and it was like, cause I didn't get on the scene till like maybe I was like 16, 17 around that time. I played with Team Loaded and I and my teammates Oscar, mm. who's in the in the NBA G League. Oscar to Yeah, And then Mac McClung, who won the dunk contest yeah. two years in a row. So it's like I locked both of them. Go ahead, though. But yeah, it was like I doing the up. things I was doing. It's like for me and my mm. family, like everything was just a new experience. Locked them up. So like me getting Oscar to where I was to getting a scholarship, and then went to being able to take. play the college level, being able to play at March Madness. I was just like, it was like basically like checking off things, like just to do yeah. like I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. It's like it was just fun because like I was basically like a pioneer to like do something else because now I got cousins, mm. younger nieces, nephews that they want to do the same thing I'm doing. They want to be pros too because they seen me do it. Yeah. yeah, there's people around like my hometown that's like seeing that what I'm doing is like inspired by, and they want to keep doing the same thing because they see yeah. if he can do it, I why can. Why cannot? Yeah, yep. you show them that they can really. Like, they they can do it. Yeah, you open yeah. doors, bro. Yeah, that that's the thing. You open yeah. the door. When you open doors, stuff come easy, bro. Yeah, people don't don't see sometimes those kind of things. Like yeah. they they just see the success and say like, hey, he's there. Yeah. But when they start looking into the process, it's yeah. like, oh, it was a long process. Sure. That's how it was. He, he get a pro. You get to care. get the first one. Yeah. You get to get a second chance and really make it yeah. so th these kind of things are the ones that people should know like yeah. not I'm not just an athlete I think just people need to take risks scoring every night yeah, sure. take risks people need to take risks I think a lot of stuff um, a lot of successful people take a lot of risks yeah. they believe in themselves they believe in themselves like for me I'll just say I'll take a risk and I'm really good in basketball, but I'm like, well, I'm gonna go ahead and just jump in football and see what happens. If yeah. it don't work out, then I'll just come back to basketball. You know, so that's how I look at it. You just gotta take risks. Yeah, maybe they were not gonna receive you back like this. Yeah. Like, sometimes you only got one chance. Yeah, I don't think you got yeah. one chance. So. Yeah. And now, coming to the present, how how was this process of they, Angeles, a new team, Mexico City, one of the biggest cities in the world, they calling you and say like, hey, we got a new project. Yeah. You want to come and jump in the ship? Uh, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. <laughs> Man, the whole process, bro, I laugh at every time because I'm like, bro, what's going on, bro? I just be thinking God be putting me on side quest sometimes. Sometimes I just think he just be testing me, throwing me in the water and see how I last. But when I got the call, I was like, Angeles, Mexico City. I was like, I ain't never been to Mexico City. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go try it out. Let me go out there and play. I was just happy to be back, honestly. Like, I miss basketball so much. I was in Baku, I was in Bajan before I came here. And it wasn't too much like this, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just feel like a real basketball atmosphere. I think my uh, calling out there is more just getting back into my, you know, spiritually, uh, just touching the basketball, just doing something I love, you know. It was never about the money for me because at the end of the day, it's like, um, I'm, I'm pretty good on the, that that side, but I just want to play basketball again. And then coming to this right here with these two ugly guys, I mean, the rest of the ugly guys, um, <laughs> I can't wish for a better team. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm not just saying that. It feel like a real basketball atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? Like, and guys compete, guys play around. So, uh, for me, I was just happy to just come. But getting that call, I was just like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> first year team? Like, the last team I was on was a first year team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm on another first year team that's trying to build. So, um, like I said, it's got to be a call from God. I don't know. I'm just blessed. <laughs> and your call, how was it? I call, uh, so I was in, um, I put on two, uh, this is my third team actually. Yeah. Uh, I was in Montenegro. Uh, very bad situation. You're, um, you're like Will, third team of the yeah, year. Third team of the year. So my first time ever doing this too, I've been playing. It's my sixth year and I, I it's my first time being on three teams in one year. So, um, but I was in Montenegro before here. Bad situation. Should have never went there from the jump. But, uh, then after that, I went left from Montenegro. I went to Israel. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they got that war going on there. So yeah. going there was was kind of skeptical. My family was nervous just because of the wars going on. Yeah. They just ain't know, you know, everything. So when I was in Israel, that was the most I ever talked to my family ever in my life. Like, they was literally calling me, like, 24-7. Mm -hmm. Like, 24-7. If, if they ain't talking to me that morning, I'm getting, I go to practice, I'm getting six missed calls from them. Like, yeah. just to see if I'm okay and stuff like that. And then uh, I left Israel. 
and came here. Uh, and Day uh, that Quan, Quan Bracey, yeah. already signed to the team. And me and him was college teammates. And we oh. for two years. So, really, my agent wasn't even trying to, like, he wasn't calling me. It was Day Day calling me. He was like, <laughs> bro, you need to come to this team. You need to sign, you know. They already got me here, so you coming here is gonna be more fun and stuff like that. So I'm like, damn. Oh, I'm like, dang. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we'll uh, make money in this podcast. Yeah, so so I'm, I'm, I'm like, damn, I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I might go to Mexico just to play with a college teammate that you know that I that I know. So I was just like, all right, I'm gonna jump on board with it, you know, yeah. just because I knew somebody there already. So that's it was it was kind of crazy, and it's still crazy. Cause I still can't believe that I'm playing with one of my college teammates. So it's crazy. But I'm excited though. No, oh, there's another one. Like <laughs> being being away, maybe not being in touch that close with him, and just getting the call like, "Hey, you should I mean, come and play." Man, and Daddy still had the relationship at the college. Uh, we were still checking up on each other and stuff like that. I still check up on my college guys to this day. So we just see how they're doing and stuff like that. So yeah, um, just just hearing from Bracy and and man got the same agent too. That's the crazy part. No, oh. like it's just, it's just crazy how it happened. So. Um, And when he called me, it was like, yeah, bro, this Musket team, first year, we come out here and, you know, have a good time. So I was like, all right. Let's go. Yeah, I already yeah. get away from a war. We exactly. can do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, exactly. That's, so that's, like, that's point. That's point. Especially from this war, too. So yeah. Like, Let's go to Mexico City. Me experiencing the stuff that was going on there, like my first day there, they had to, like these alarms go off. And like that's when uh, they shoot the bombs and the... Israelians, they shoot like these other missiles to hit the bomb, yeah. and, like knock them out. So, my first day there, I heard an alarm. They like, you gotta go in your safe room and see your bedroom. And so, I went to my bedroom. They saying, I'm on my bed. Next thing I hear, I'm, I'm thinking it's not, it's not gonna be nothing crazy. I hear, boom, boom, boom. I'm thinking it's in our building. So, I jump on the floor. I'm laying. I'm like, yo, what the <laughs> fuck? <is going?" laughs> <Hey, somebody." laughs> This is the first day I got there. Like, literally, the first day, and the alarms came on the first day I got there. That was. It was a crazy experience for sure. He thought he was in Call of Duty. Middle was getting hit. He thought he was in Call of Duty. The way it was sounding, it, was, it sounded so close. It was crazy. It was yeah. a crazy experience for sure. Yeah, I bet you were just like, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, fine. Yeah, I'm, yeah, good. I'm fine. Nah, Get yeah. out. It was crazy. <laughs> I can't believe it was crazy. Oh. You like Mexico City more than there, right? I hope so. Nah, and, 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 uh, Israel, they, they say they like, for them, war is like very common to yeah them. like they be in war like every year or every two years they're always so it's normal somebody. yeah so it's like kind of normal to them right. but this going on that happened it was like one of the biggest things ever yeah you know so because like i had a few uh teammates i played with in the g league that was there when it first kicked off like when it first happened that day on the six or something like that like when they started bombing and kidnapping people and stuff like that so it was just That's crazy. Hearing stories from them and them telling me this is my first get there. It's like, damn, did I make the right decision? Yeah, should, I, right. should I not have came here? You're ready to go back. I'm ready to go back. Yeah, so, but it was it was a crazy experience for sure. Money ain't that good, I nigga. Mean, I gotta go. <laughs> Israel, Israel is a beautiful place, though. No, it Israel is. Israel is a very nice place. I've been there. Besides That's all nice. the, you know, the wars and stuff, it's a, it's a great place to visit. If, yeah. if anybody ever have an opportunity to go there, and they should go. Why this stuff is not going for sure. They should, should go. go. It's, it's, it's very nice. For that sure. should be on the bucket list for yeah, sure. It's really very nice for sure. I'm gonna try one day. Yeah. yeah. That's good. You follow the Bible through it. That's, they, they got a tour where they, you can go through the, with the Bible and they take the East part. And it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. That sounds. <laughs> that sounds something I. I <laughs> and you, that call. <laughs> Man, and my call was. It came and it was like for me. It was like I wanted to be somewhere where I was wanted and where I felt like I could I could thrive and be in a place where I've never been before. Mm -hmm. And for me, I always wanted to come to Mexico. I've always seen stuff about it. I got friends in my hometown from Mexico that told me like great things about Mexico. And that was when I was on the phone with my agent. Just because I was probably around, I want to say, like 11 to 10 months post rehab because I had an injury that had cut my season short for my rookie year. Yeah. And then I had an opportunity in the G League with the Mavericks. So I was there in the training camp and I got drafted. And so at first I thought I was going to be with them. But some things went, some things happened. It was just like they had to send me home because, you know, I was still injured at the time. So by the time this call came around, I was like, I want to do it. Like it's a new team. They're giving me a chance. Cause, and they know about my situation. That's like, I'd rather go somewhere where I can, you know, build myself back up from ground zero. Yeah. Instead of trying to like, find, like fight my way to like earn something where it's like, I 
I feel like I pro I've proven myself in certain places, but it's mm -hmm. like why not try to prove myself again in a place where it's like they care about like the people that they have on this team. They care about like what you have going on, and it's like being around the guys for like what about a month now. It's yeah, like, I feel like we're a family and we're brothers, and I love and I love these guys. Yeah, you know I'm like the youngest, and they you know they pick on me from time to time. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy it here, I and I'm guys. honestly happy. I'm honestly happy. Like, I love these they call. guys. I was ready, I was ready to jump out to the opportunity. Gonna get it I think that's the, m the most important you thing. Like, so you're enjoying. Yeah. You're having fun. Time time. I think that's that's all. Yeah? Yeah. And time time. how do you feel, like, people, when you get to the arena, like, they... It's not a big arena, but you hear people. Yeah. Like, when you're on the floor, you can hear, like, people scream your names. Yeah, it's so funny. Each basket that you score, people yeah. just getting crazy. Yeah, it's funny. I just, oh, yeah. I can't wait to, like, we do a, a game where it's, everything's sold out. Because uh, the way Bobby told me, it's like, man, the floor is shape. Yeah. You know, so it can be one of those crowds. You know, or it can be a crowd where... It's not that many people, and like you say, you can hear everything somebody's saying, even when they're drinking their beers. <laughs> so, um, I'm so used to it. I know these guys used to it because they played on that level too. Where man, we've been having fans chant at us for a long time, good and bad. Trust me. Yeah. Uh, but here, I like it here. I just want. I'm ready for a sold out arena. I want to see like when it's very sold out. Oh. Can't wait. Believe me, you're we gonna got, see we that. We're gonna go on the street. I remember street. one game. It was Mexico again, United States. Mm -hmm, it's back. Uh, and it was for going to the World Cup mm -hmm. from FIBA, and that gym was so packed. Like there was not even one space. God, oh, damn. people just screaming. You can feel the, the floor, the heat, the floor, everything. Like, and just your skin just getting like yeah. chicken skin, something like that. It's like, damn. I like those type of games. Yeah, I, I bet that as the as the season keeps going, yeah, it's gonna get there. The arena will be like just back. Yeah, we just, everybody's just finding out about the team. We start trying to figure ourselves out. But once we really get everything clicking and going and we're throwing backboard dunks and doing crazy things like that and uh, getting the crowd involved, it's going to be crazy. So I see the vision so far. You see the vision of the person? Okay, I see the vision. It's going to get scary in a minute. It's going to get scary. Well, guys. Keep calling. Oh, <laughs> Uh, really, I'm really glad that you have the time to come here and talk with us uh, about all your experiences. And I just want to say good luck for the for the rest of the season. Stay yeah. healthy, yeah. so we can see all of your skills on the court. Yeah, <laughs> can't wait, man. Thank you so much, bro. Thanks for having us. Yeah, and anytime, bro. We can come. We'll do it, honestly. Thank you. What's up? We're, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep doing some some yeah. other things. You will see. Yeah, just What? not him. <laughs> Keep him home. <laughs> Keep him home. Bueno amigos, eso fue todo. Este es Fan Deportivo. Nos vemos en el siguiente episodio.